Okay, here's an example of a differential equation with a nice solution to it. And this comes from a friend of mine, Spencer Gray, who, who's a pilot. He flies 767s, among other planes. But he asked me once, if the plane is on the ground and you're flying on the ground and you're driving up to the gate or on the taxiway or something and you turn the plane such that the nose wheel lines up with this line that you're supposed to be following. So say the nose wheel is right about here and you turn the plane so it's going to line up with a, a straight line. And so as the plane moves forward you keep the nose wheel aligned so it moves this way and as the plane moves forward then the back end slowly ends up swinging around until it's eventually lined up or pretty close to lined up along that line. And so the question is if you have the plane in some initial position like you see here and you turn the nose wheel and maintain course so the nose wheel tracks along that line how long does it take the back end of the plane to swing around so it's also lined up with that line and the answer is that it never completely lines up it gets really close and we, we can see how long it takes to come within a certain distance but it never actually gets there and we'll set it up set up the equation and solve this and see why so the trick to these problems is always in setting them up correctly. So let's look at the diagram here. This is the front wheel of the aircraft, and the back wheels are probably about right here. And so we're going to be looking at this distance, this, um, this line segment right here. And we'll call that length L. Okay, that's the, those two points are the points that basically determine the rotation of the plane and as the plane moves forward it's moving right now in this direction and the distance that it moves is uh, the distance that it moves we'll call that x is going to be the velocity times the time so so we need to think here in terms of differential quantities if it's moving just a tiny little bit in an infinitely small amount of time then the, the distance it moves is an infinitely small distance dx during this infinitely small time dt so dx is equal to v dt now as it moves this distance here we need to concern ourselves with that's the distance y and we're basically asking how long does it take for y to get to zero or to get really close to zero because once y gets to zero the plane is basically lined up with this line. So we need to figure out what to do with y and see the little red arrow there that indicates the motion of the plane. As the plane moves forward a distance dx, if that were dx right there, then there would be this little corresponding vertical component of that which would be dy. So dy is the little incremental change of the distance of the back wheels from the line. And we need to name this angle right here. We'll call that theta, that angle right there. And you can see that the, the distance or, or the rate at which the back wheels approach the line is not the velocity of the plane. It's the velocity times the sine of theta. So we can write this little, little equation. dy is going to be v dt times the sine of the angle and we also need to introduce a negative sign right there because dy is getting smaller as as the plane moves forward as the velocity of the plane moves forward and time is going forward y is getting smaller so that negative sign takes that into account now we could solve this equation but we have two variables here we have a y here and a theta here so we need to get theta in terms of y and fortunately that's pretty easy to do. If you look at this little right triangle here you can see angle theta has y as the opposite side and L is the hypotenuse so it's pretty easy to see that sine theta is y over L. So we can just substitute that right there for sine theta and so we can write dy is equal to negative y over L times v dt and you see the the v dt was right there and the sine theta was written right there as y over l and we still have the negative sign and now we'll just rearrange this a little bit I'm gonna write dy over y is equal to negative v over l 
times dt. And then we can solve this by integrating, so we integrate both sides. And the integral of dy over y, I'm going to come up, come up here because I'm running out of room. The integral of dy over y is the natural log of y. And we have our negative v over l. And the integral of dt is just t, and of course we have to add a constant of integration. Now to solve this for y, we need to exponentiate both sides with base e. A base e exponent will get rid of our base e logarithm. So y ends up equaling negative v over l t. Excuse me, that's e to the power of negative v over l t. And I'll write it like this, negative v t over l plus c. And all of this is up here in the um, exponent position. So let's deal with that for a second. This is going to be, I'm, I'm going to call this constant, I'm going to call it C1. It doesn't really matter, it's just a constant. According to the laws of exponents here, if I have these two exponents added together, that's equivalent to this, e to the negative vt over l times e to the C1. And if C1 is a constant, then e to the power of c1 is a constant. So I can say y is equal to e to the power of c1. I'm just going to rename that as some other constant. I'll call that c. So c e to the negative vt over l. And we can figure out what this constant is. Exactly. And it turns out to be pretty easy and intuitive. We just say that at time 0, so when we, when we have a zero here for this t, at time zero, the equation will look like this. y will equal to c times e to the zero. And e to the zero is just one, because e to the, or anything to the zero is one. So, so at time zero, y is equal to c. So that means c is the initial y position. So c has to be, So c is equal to the initial y value. So here's our equation, and I'll write it in the middle here, just because that's the only place I have room. y is equal to y0 times e to the negative vt over l. So now let's take this equation and work out an example. OK, here it is. Here's our equation. And let's suppose that this distance L here is 30 meters. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but the 767 is a big plane. So let's say L is 30 meters. That's probably a decent guess. And let's suppose it's moving at 5 meters per second. And suppose the initial distance here is 10 meters. And we want to find how long it takes such that Y is 0.1 meters. So in other words, it's getting 99% of the way there. Remember, it never gets all the way there, but if it's going to get 99% of the way there within a tenth of a meter, how long will that take? Well, here's we just put in these numbers into the equation, so here's the solution. y ends up being 0.1, and that's going to equal y0, which is 10. That's going to be 10 times e to the negative v, and v we said was 5 times t over l, which was 30. And then we'll divide each side by 10. And those cancel, and we're left with 0.01 equals e. And I'm going to write this as e to the negative t over 6. And then we solve this for t by taking the natural log of each side. And we have the natural log of 0.01 equals negative t over 6. So t has to equal negative natural log of 0.01 times 6. And you work that out on the calculator, and it comes out to 27.6 seconds. And at, at that speed, at 5 meters per second, that comes out to about 138 meters of travel distance. So uh, that sounds pretty reasonable based on these initial assumptions.